she taught piano. Did you know that she taught piano lessons? She had students that came in every day and she used to wash their hands before they were allowed to touch the piano and she cut their nails. She was like the best mother in the whole world. Never judgmental, she was always understanding. She was really warm and wonderful person and you really knew that if you were her child you were fine. My mother was clearly part of this Jewish community, a big part, and we had every Jewish holiday. But I don't remember her going to the synagogue with us. I think she stayed home. I think she stayed home and cooked. My mother was the hostess in the dining room. You had to have a different dress in the morning for breakfast and lunch, and then a new dress in the evening with shoes to match. And my mother was like this really well-dressed woman. She was the hostess with the mostest. I remember that my father used to call her that all the time. And people always said that about her. But I was so proud to have her as my mother. After my father died, my mother became a totally different person where she was an unselfish, caring mother. She suddenly could not understand how she was going to take care of herself. She had no money, she had no house, she had nothing. She was no longer this all caring, loving, perfect mother. I guess she was in a panic. I mean, I'm looking back on it now, but for us, we just like, what is this? We don't have a mother, we don't have a father. When I had children and she was so wrapped up in herself, that's when it really hurt. So you could have had the biggest load in your diaper and she would have just said, Helen, think your son needs some help. <laughs> she wouldn't do anything. That person, as my mother, was hard to take. Her second life was the person that you remember as a school teacher and a traveler. All that was a whole different person than the person I grew up with as my mother. I always kept waiting for that mother to come back. I never accepted it. I talked to my sisters about it, and we all feel that way. She was so not unloving. That's the thing. She wasn't unloving, but she wasn't who we wanted. Wish everybody happy for him. Happy birthday. <laughs> Purim. Purim. Yes, Purim. The 20th. Say hello to Selma. Us coming oh, every week, business. sometimes twice a week, was at that point really, really important to her. Say, say hello to and sometimes Selma. I would say to Gail, look at us. We come running twice a week to see her and take her places and give her things. This is the same mother who really was way too busy or too selfish to even do this for us when we were young adults. But yet, we still do it for her. rabbi who none of us knew and who didn't know her and went on and on and on with more prayers and more prayers and I really truly could feel my mother rolling her eyes and saying let me out of here the rabbi started coughing and coughing and couldn't stop coughing and so had to stop the sermon thank goodness we were all thrilled and I'm I, I do think that my mother did that. I probably spoil my children more now because of the lack of my mother that I had 
as I was your age. I want to be like she was, the image I have of her. 